Okay, so today's video is, um, I'm gonna tag you guys along for repairing some sheetrock. I'm not an expert on sheetrock, really. Even after having done 7,000 square feet in this house, I promise I'm not an expert. So I know that some of you watching this video know more than I do about sheetrock, and that's awesome. I encourage you to shoot your own videos or post tips in the comments. Um, just as a heads up, I do approve all the comments, so if you advertise something or say something mean or stupid, your comment won't get approved. Thanks for watching. So, um, this is a 1965 house. I really like my house, but one of the things I don't like in my house is this narrow ass stairway. And so the problem with this narrow stairway is that we took a queen size box spring upstairs and um, when we went to bring it downstairs, it just wasn't pretty, it wasn't pretty at all. So um, we had four full size, adult American men trying to get this mattress to come around this corner and the mattress wasn't having any of it. Not a bit. Really impressive thing was the mattress didn't snap in half. It did bend. But um, we realized that to get the mattress out we had to take the stairway back to the condition it was in when the mattress went up which is there was no sheetrock. So that meant we had to knock some holes in the sheetrock. So we tore up down here, we tore up up here, we tore a hole in the wall over there, and we put a, a hole in the wall here. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you guys how I patch a hole in sheetrock. And um, you know, it really does pain me to put a hole in sheetrock, but I did 7,000 square feet of it. What's well, another four? Really? It's that simple. So first things first, you can't patch crazy. So you gotta get the hole a little bit normal so you can, so you can um, patch it. I'm using a cheap Harbor Freight knife. Um, these come in two varieties. One has a clip up here that releases the, um, the blade, it rotates. I don't like that. Um, and the other uh, style has a push button here and another button here to release the blade. And I find that friendlier and safer. But nonetheless, this will work. It can also be locked at about a 22 degree angle. You know, that's great if you're cutting carpet, but I'm cutting sheetrock. So I've got a fresh blade in here. And by the way, the cheap Harbor Freight blades work just as well as the expensive Milwaukee blades. In fact, maybe a little bit better because the Milwaukee blades are about $12 for a box and the Harbor Freight, um, you can get a hundred of them for like two bucks. So there are some things at Harbor Freight that are a good deal. <clears throat> so we're gonna open this up and clean it up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the better it is, the easier it goes. The reason I say it doesn't have to be perfect is that's what mud's for. I think I'm gonna cheat. Okay, so um, I need to make a longer cut and um, it's hard to do a, when nothing behind the sheetrock. So I brought out my cordless um, spiral saw from DeWalt, great tool. So I've squared this up. Next thing I need to do is I need to, to clean up this mess and I need to get some clips in here. So I'm gonna pause the recording and I'll be back in just a minute with that. Okay, so the next step is I've gone ahead and cleaned this up with my shop vac. 
And the next step is to measure um, a piece of sheetrock to go in the space. So I'm going to measure the maximum distance is 14 and a half and the maximum height is 20 and a half. I'm going to go cut that piece and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut that where I said I would mark it and it should just fit almost perfectly into the hole that I need to patch and it does. I've got a little bit that I need to trim here. Oops. And the idea is not, the goal is not to get this in here perfectly. The goal is just to get it in here good enough and then fix it with mud. All right, so that looks pretty good. One problem though, I, I, there's nothing to screw into. So I've got a fix for that. Now that I have a piece of sheetrock that will fit in the hole I'm trying to patch, let me grab some clips. Okay, so there are a couple of different ways to do this. Um, one of the things you can do is you can take some sticks of wood like one by twos or you know something else and you can put them across your hole and then screw your patch into that. That works just fine. Uh, in this case, I don't really have the space behind the sheetrock for that because I'm up against the stud on, on two sides. So um, the other thing you can do is you can trim back to a stud so you can put a clean patch in. And I'm not, I don't want to make this hole any bigger than it already is. So the other option is to buy drywall repair clips. And um, they sell these at home improvement centers. Bought this at Home Depot. It's, I don't know, three, three or four dollars for six clips and it includes some screws. And it comes in frustration guaranteed packaging. An unpleasant relative of frustration free packaging. So the way these work, so the way this works is um, the screws will go through and anchor into these and these clips break off um, once it's in. So I can clip that one there clip this one here and for shits and giggles because I'm being a smart ass I'll put a third one there not gonna put anything there and it's just gonna have to work down there now it comes with some screws but I have a screw gun and well it's just faster So I'm checking my screws to make sure they're all below the surface of my uh, substrate here. And I've gotten any areas that are loose off. And now what I need to do is I need to come back and feather this a little bit so that I can patch onto it. And then I'll tape it and put some mud up. Okay, so I'm just finishing up getting all the dust up. What I've done is I've gone ahead and just given this a good rough sanding, makes the tape stick better. And now I'm going to use fiberglass mesh tape. And so I'll just put this on here like this, trim it with a pair of scissors. It has uh, some sort of adhesive attached to it so it stays. Different people like it, different people don't like it. Um, it's what I learned with, so it's what I've always used. And um, I, I later learned that it's actually considered harder to use, but I personally find it to be easy to use. So I'll just give that a nice little trim, flip that down there, because I've got another hole I'm patching over here. So this is ready for mud. So what I'm gonna do at this point is uh, I'm going to uh, mix up a little batch of mud to do the areas I need to patch and then I'm going to come back here and put that mud on. Um, mud comes in 20, 45 minute and 90 minute uh, formulations. Um, I've got 90 minute mud here because that's what I used when I did the, the majority of the house. I've also got 20 minute mud. Um, 
and um, 20 minute mud is good for real quick touch ups. Um, I've got some other areas of the house I'm working on and basically uh, when you mix up uh, mud from the time you're done mixing until the time it starts to become unworkable is what that, that time is and um, 20 minute mud you really have 10 or 15 minutes to work with and 45 minute mud you've got about 30-35 minutes and 90 minute mud you've got a little over an hour, hour and 10 minutes. and um, that's just kind of how it is and it, it chemically cures like concrete and so um, that's one of the things I like about it. it it doesn't shrink as it cures and it's just as hard as the actual sheetrock itself so you don't have any um, issues with the way it, it uh, cures so anyway let me go get that mixed up and I'll be back to put that up all right folks so I've mixed up some mud I'm out of 90 minute mud so I had to mix it with some 20 minute which is usually not a good idea to mix your types of mud but in this case it won't matter because I don't have a whole lot to do so I'm gonna scrape this on and then finish it off and get this done as quickly as I can before it starts to set on me And in about 20 minutes, this will be ready. This will be hard. And in about 40 minutes, it will be ready for a second coat, should I choose to put one on today. And that is one of the beauties of setting compound is that with ready mix compound, I'd have to wait at least 24 hours for enough moisture to come out of this for it to be considered cured. So you don't want to get it perfect. You just want to get it good enough for this coat. So I'm going to move on to this other area over here, and I appreciate you guys watching, and I hope you found this to be interesting and insightful. Um, after this, I'll come back and knock this off in about 20 minutes, knock off any ridges. I'll apply a second coat, and then I'll do a third coat to touch it up, followed by primer and paint, and you will never know that that was there. Thanks for watching.